Okay, Clay. Obviously, we know your name is Clay from Kenosi Lake Bible Camp, but uh, what do you do out at Kenosi Lake? Uh, I'm the ministry director. Uh, so essentially anything that's like directly ministry related um, falls under my, um, that's sort of what I look after. So staff hiring, booking speakers, um, running retreats and stuff throughout the winter, um, all those follow up, discipleship, those sorts of areas um, kind of fall to me. Um, and so I look after, look after those things. Sweet. Okay. Tell us a few of your favorite things. So uh, what's one of your favorite or your ideal snack foods, your favorite sports team? And then I'll have a few more questions, but that's maybe those ones first there. Yeah. Um, favorite snack foods. Uh, a couple that come to mind would be uh, Doritos Sweet Chili Heat. Oh, yeah. Um, they're very good. And, and the Chips Ahoy Chocolate Chunks um, cookies. I go through those by the sleeve. So I try not to buy them too often because they tend to disappear fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. As far as favorite sports teams go, uh, it probably depends a little bit on the season. Um, whether it's summer or winter, um, but overall, uh, the Edmonton Oilers, they're my team, uh, big Oilers fan. And uh, then obviously the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, in nice. the summer. But I guess this year, if hockey comes back in summer, then I'll just, you know, I'll have to cheer for both at the same time. And that'll be wonderful. Sweet. Okay, we just created a BCA worship playlist for Spotify. And if you guys out there didn't know, uh, just search Briarcrest Christian Academy Worship on Spotify and you'll find it. Uh, but Clay, do you have any recommendations for our playlist? Any songs that we should add? We might we might have it, but feel free to make yeah. it. Yeah, um, I, was, I was actually looking at the playlist beforehand, um, listening to it a little bit. And I would say King of My Heart, um, but that's already on there. So nice. I won't yeah. say that. Um, basically, um, any song off of Chris Renzema, Renzema, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, um, but off his album, I'll Be the Branches, yeah. um, I, I found very encouraging recently, especially the song, uh, God Be, it just, I don't know, it's, it's been a, a cool one for me personally, cool. uh, as of late, so, yeah. Okay, we'll have to check it out. And if yeah. you're out there watching, uh, make sure you follow it on Spotify so that you can easily access the playlist. Uh, and what's your favorite camp game, Clay? Um, I guess kind of, so I work at Kenosi Lake Bible Camp full time and I have for like four years now. Um, but before that, um, I work at Dallas Valley. Um, and so there they call it Kiss Me Here at Kenosi. It's called Cootie Catchers. Um, that would probably be my favorite. For those of you who don't know it, it's the one where you have the the belt tied around your wrist and then the flag on there, guys, girls, in the smaller ish area, steal a flag, turn it in for a point. Uh, it's a pretty simple game, but, but highly competitive. And, uh, I don't know, I, I'm a fairly competitive person. And so, especially back when I was at Dallas Valley, kind of as a teenager, um, young, early twenties, uh, that was, that was always my favorite game and, uh, really enjoyed playing it. Yeah, yeah, I must agree, and I've, I'm pretty, uh, I don't know if you were there, Clay, or if you remember, Clay and I used to work at Dallas Valley together for like seven years, and uh, that was the game where I broke a girl's nose. <laughs> Not a camper, it was, a, it was another I... staff member, but yeah, it's a very intense game, and I was trying to dodge a little girl that was in front of me because I was a staff member, and so I flung my arm back. And as I was going back, there was a girl coming, like a staff member from coming from behind, trying to sneak up on me and full force elbow to the nose. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just that much stronger because that uh, like rank Chicago Blackhawk shirt you always wore for wide games. Yes. Yeah. Still do. If yeah. I come out to Kenosi, that's what I'm going to wear. Nice. So. Cool. So for people who, who don't know much about Kenosi, where is it? Where's Kenosi Lake? Um... Well, we're on the, the very west edge of, of Kelsey Lake, which is in Moose Mountain Provincial Park. Um, but on a broader spectrum, two hours southeast of Regina is a simple answer. Uh, two hours south of Yorkton, uh, two hours from Brandon, hour and a half from Estevan and Weyburn. So we're kind of like right in the middle of all those places here in, in southeastern Saskatchewan. Sweet. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. And uh, because yeah. I have my previous experience with campus at Dallas Valley, it's actually really cool that we, there's a lake there. So Yeah. Yeah, um, I I didn't grow up going to the lake or anything like that. Dallas Valley Horses was the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was born at the climbing wall of Dallas, but um, being in Kenosi, I definitely like I definitely prefer the lake to horses. Like, right on for sure. 
Okay, uh, so Clay, this last Wednesday for our chapel, we looked at Mary and Martha's encounter with Jesus from the Gospel of Luke, and uh, it's Luke chapter 10. And uh, so we're just curious for you, like I shared a little bit about what I've been doing, and uh, so what do you do to spend time with God to get to know him better? Yeah, um, there's a few things. I guess um, recently, um, Brad Dawson, those are the executive directors here at KLBC, um, and I kind of for this month, we've been going through a 30 day spiritual discipline uh, thing. So it's been kind of cool exploring some of those different uh, disciplines and, and just what that looks like, um, things that I would normally do. Um, but but I guess the, the regular rhythms for me would be um, in the morning uh, doing just some time of prayer and, and Bible reading, um, kind of start my day off that way. Um, and then at night, um, journaling, and, and I find that to be, those things to be helpful. Uh, on a less regular basis, I guess for me, kind of my go-to um, would be just getting outside uh, alone, um, often with some worship music or, or a meaningful podcast or something like that. Um, and just like, I mean, it's, it's great here at Kenosi. There's lots of different spots, whether it's in the middle of a lake on a boat or, or wandering through the forest or up on a hill, kind of overlooking the park um, or under the stars. Like it's, it's I find being out in nature uh, just listening to worship music to be a, a place where I um, often encounter God and, and those those really meaningful moments kind of happen in, in that way. Mm, cool. Um, okay, so we have we have a few students in our our school where, who have come out to Kenosi Lake. I'm curious if you can give them, I don't know if you've been in contact with them, but if you can give some sort of an update on where Kenosi is at with what summer plans might be or what, what it might look like for staff training coming up. What can you tell those yeah. students? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty around it all now. Uh, um, I guess that like Scott Moe kind of came out with the opening up Saskatchewan plan this morning, um, which maybe gave some more possibilities of what might happen. Basically right now we are much like everybody else kind of in the waiting stages to, to figure out what, what will be possible for us. Um, and we're kind of making plans for, for, you know, if we can return to normal kind of overnight camps. Um, if we can't do that, is there a possibility of doing like day camps uh, combined on site or like at, in more churches and, and towns around? Um, so that's a possibility or or like exploring what it might look like to do more of a virtual camp um, and kind of talking through some of those options. Um, One Hope Canada is, is doing some pretty cool stuff uh, that I don't know that, that I have the authority to announce uh, right now, but, but if you follow One Hope Canada, um, you'll, you'll find out kind of what that is in the near future here. And so, so we're sort of making all these different plans and possibilities uh, because um, really, regardless of what the situation looks like, what we're allowed to do, how many people we can gather, um, we're still focused on doing ministry in some capacity. Um, it'll just look different than it has in past years. Um, and so our mission uh, is, is to share God's love or show God's love, share God's truth, and built out family and that hasn't changed um and so we're still just exploring different ways to do that um as far as staff training goes the the original plan was to do it kind of in two parts uh may long weekend the first part and the second part um end of june beginning of july um on site and may looks like it won't happen or be able to happen in person right now um officially our board will will decide on that on may 4th so We'll be in touch with anybody who's applied um, at that point of, of what May would look like. Um, and then, so if that doesn't happen, then there's the potential that June training gets extended a little bit by a couple days, um, or, or there's more online training in advance. Um, and it all depends on what summer will look like uh, for us, what kind of program we're planning on running, how many staff we end up hiring, things like that. Right. Um, so for those, who, for those who've applied at this point, basically what we've been telling our staff is, we're excited to have you on our team, um, but we also don't know what the summer's going to look like. There's the possibility that we don't run camp at all, that we can't hire any staff. There's a possibility that we hire a smaller team than usual. Um, and so if you have other job opportunities, like they're welcome to kind of pursue those if they have more secure options uh, that are possible for them. Um, and, and we won't have any hard feelings towards them if that's the case. Um, but if not, like we're exploring different ways of um, of still doing ministry and, and having them involved in that. Um, the government's always coming up with new programs and, and subsidies and 
and things for, for even student workers. So um, kind of still continuing to figure out what all that looks like um, and then bring through, yeah, what, what ministry could look like this summer. Cool. Okay, so Clay, how could students get involved with what you guys are doing at Knowsley Lake this summer? Um, I guess there's, it'll sort of depend what we end up doing, uh, partially. Um, but um, one way is to apply um, to work at camp. And, and then if we do end up running camp normally or, or whatever it looks like, then you'll be kind of among the first to know and, and be involved in that way. Uh, we're also doing with uh, with those who have worked for us last year and, and have applied for this coming summer. Um, we're doing weekly a couple events online with with those staff um, every week. So Monday nights we're doing like games nights, whether that's like over Jackbox or um, different different games over Zoom. Um, Monday evenings and then Thursday evenings um, we're doing staff Bible studies. Um, right now we're going through Philippians and just kind of discussing it together. And so it's been cool connecting with um, both past and future um, cabin leaders and, and whatnot uh, with them online. Um, and, and then they can, yeah, we can continue to grow and be a, an encouraging community, uh, even as we sit and wait. Um, in the future, we'll be rolling out some more online stuff that they can, that people can participate in um, and, and give feedback on. And if you, they have ideas like, totally open whatever mm. um and and yeah then once summer comes depending what what uh, version of camp ends up being um there's definitely volunteer and and potentially paid opportunities for them to serve cool hey well uh i just wanted to say this too to our, to our students I, they've heard me say this many times before but uh, I can honestly say that camp is the place where I learned uh, what it means to follow Jesus in my life. So as a teenager, it was it was probably the best place. Uh, my youth group did an awesome job as well, and so did my school. But uh, at camp, you actually get to put your faith into practice and, and help other kids understand what it's like. And um, it's where I learned to read the Bible and, and, get, and really um, understand what it means and have to learn how to articulate what it means. And so if you're a student out there watching this, like watching this video and uh, you're not sure about camp, um, if you want to grow in your relationship with the Lord, even if you're not sure if camp's the right thing for you, uh, that will definitely happen if you decide to work at camp. And so I definitely encourage you to apply to one. And even though things are super uncertain, um, apply anyway. And the worst thing is that it doesn't happen and then you do something else. Um, but you might, if, if it really is something you want to do, uh, it's worth a little bit of effort. So. Uh, yeah. check it out and where specifically how do they apply for Kenosi is it on your website or uh yeah Kenosi like Bible camp uh, dot ca and then there's a join our team tab and click that and, and there's buttons and links and things to to take you to the different positions that we're hiring um and like me I know a lot, I talk to a lot of people that are like ah I'm not really a huge fan of kids or I don't think camp's for me or whatever um the reality is that there's so many different positions at camp um, not just being a cabin leader and looking after the little kids um, mm -hmm. that like there's there is a place at camp for everybody whether that's in a more like behind the scenes role or up front being crazy and dramatic or you know just kind of dealing with those, those shyer kids or, or whatever and building those relationships like it doesn't matter who you are there is a place for you at camp uh, you just got to be willing to take the step to, to come and find it yeah. um, and and you'll grow like I know much my story is much the same as Caleb except I didn't have a Christian high school to go to, didn't really have a youth group to be a part of. And so camp was just really critical for me uh, growing in my faith and, and realizing that my faith actually mattered and that it, it meant something. It was more than just going to church on Sundays. Um, there was a real purpose and, and a salvation that, that the gospel brings. And uh, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing, Clay. Uh, looks like we're down to our final 30 seconds. So I'm just going to wrap it up here. And uh, thank you so much for welcoming or joining us today and uh all the best we're praying for you guys and just so you know grade nines this was the camp we were going to be going on a retreat to and it's really sad for me that we won't be there but uh we'll look forward to seeing what we can do in the future to see if we can get back out there so anyways thanks for coming clay and uh thanks we'll talk for having me. yeah you bet we'll talk to you later all right bye, bye.